distrust, distrust of Albany, discuss too, um, has never been higher, and it's no small part because of the real and perceived conflicts of interest that they believe, and you guys have articulated here tonight, exist in the state capitol, as well as the lack of transparency. I'd like to know, if you were elected, are you prepared to say to the audience here that the only job you not only would hold but be compensated for would be a state legislator and you would not have a second job? Mr. Ball. To, uh, once again, uh, that's exactly what I did when elected to the New York State Assembly. I had a job, most of these guys, they, and, and men and women, they take their position, and then they use their public position for the private benefit. Albany has turned, literally turned, shifting around large sums of money into a professional support, either through law firms, I'm not an attorney, my, my opponent is, by hiding behind the attorney-client privilege, or through consulting firms, or through not-for-profits. And it's not only people like Joe Bruno, and, and mind you, I was the only Republican in the state two years before his indictment, then the first to stand up and ask that man to step down. And in the state Senate, I will fight tooth and nail for full accountability because there's a lot of talk about campaign finance reform, which is extremely important. But it's not about the $100 here, the $2,000 here, which we can all look up online. It's about the $50, $100 million transfers to people like Sheldon Silver, to Joe Bruno, and to lesser known members who really make both of those two look like Girl Scouts because they haven't seen the, the, the scrutiny. And those are the type of initiatives why my own party leadership has spent over $2 million to stop me. Because they know, and there's a collective, oh God, he won the primary up there. Because they know if I'm seated in that state Senate seat, I will fight and be the most independent voice that that state legislature has ever seen. I was under the, the, the thumb of Sheldon Silver in the assembly. And we accomplished things like stopping the governor's driver's license plan, passing a statewide combat veterans tuition, my property tax cap bill, which is now being touted by these uh, deathbed political conversions, was my bill. My taxpayer bill of rights to cap sp state spending is my bill. So absolutely, I can tell you that that's what I did as a state assemblyman. And moving forward, I'll fight to open up the dark cave that is Albany and the hidden transfers. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Mr. Kaplan, same yeah. question. Thank you, sir. What? Another example of diametric opposition between the two of us. My opponent is a career politician. <laughs> he even studied political science in college. He's airport. either been running for politics or served as politics. And military. he's been incubated. Yeah. Sir, please, I didn't I interrupt you. In when United States Air Force. He, that's in school, sir. As a career United politician. Force, and when you go to Albany and are incubated in Albany, you are just that. He receives a $10,000 a year bonus and his base, say, base pay as well for leadership as in the assembly. Chairman, as I, chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Mike. Sir, I'm you're, first talking. You're dancing sir. all around as Veterans Affairs Sir, please, Committee. I don't interrupt you. Well, tell the truth. As a career politician, that's the flip side of what I am. I'm a small business owner. I will absolutely not give up my outside business. I will be a better legislator because I have knowledge and experience in real life. This gentleman is part of the problem in Albany. They think that this passes for good policy and work product. This got us to the mess you, we are in today. If people are happy with career politicians, they can vote the incumbent. If they want someone that can sit on the insurance committee and rein in health insurance companies, as Senator Neil Breslin asked me to do if I get elected and join him and he's chairman of that committee, I'm going to be able to have the knowledge to find out how we can rein in those companies. If, in fact, on finance, and I'm hoping to have a seat on that committee, I can go through the, the, the particular lines and find ways to close the gap. So the answer to the question is not, am I going to keep my outside experience? I'm going to be able to take the tough vote and make the tough decision knowing that my job and my not leadership is not related to that vote. But Mr. That Kaplan. freedom, sir, is what will make me a better okay, state legislator. But Mr. Kaplan, no one is, no one's debating, no one's debating that life experience is valuable, but are you saying you don't have sufficient life experience to sit in Albany without having a second job? I, now, I'm saying absolutely that that gives you the independence. That gives you the opportunity to make that tough vote, knowing that you are not beholden to leadership who's going to hold it over you. If you lose an election because of a tough issue, look at the housing vote that I voted on. I knew I could go back to my family, and I knew I could go back to my certified financial planning practice. My mom all day long says, Mike, you have a nice life. Why are you doing it? I'm doing it because it's public service. Yes, sir. That is the freedom. I'm not bought by the Senate Republicans who sent this mailing out and every other mailing, New York State Republican Committee. But this the second part of your question, sir, and this is what I do owe in return for that. What I do owe in return for that, sir, is disclosure. Because what I have to do is make sure that there are no conflicts. And in 13 years as a county legislator, there have been none. And I have stood on the floor. I'm the only one, vote after vote after vote, when appropriate and necessary, that have disclosed if there are clients involved. I have signed reform pledges. I will disclose outside income. 
and I will live up to that my part of the bargain. Okay. But, that's finally, the but finally, that to that point, you yes, don't believe that being a state legislature requires full-time attention, that there is enough time to have a second job? Sir, it's absolutely full-time effort. I've shown that as a county legislator. It's not, it's not an issue of hours. I can walk and chew gum at the same time, sir. I can, I can be... I can be a better state legislator because I'm a real person with a real job. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't want him as my state senator because he doesn't have a lick of knowledge about any of the important financial areas. It's top-line platitudes and no detail to okay. check his campaign. You, and that's proof positive, sir. Okay. Now, I would... No, go ahead. Can I, can I follow up on that since he's been a lot of no, follow-ups in the you, past? No, you answered the same question okay. posed. 